So what should we do next? How can we load a real data to our application? Well, we have to go to the Spotify API docs first. And let's see what call we need to make. The plan is to get recent releases. So if I go to the API docs, so what I've done here is I've gone to docs, web API, reference, and then from there, browse, and from there, there we go, new releases. So we need to make a call to this URL. In the docs, they sort of explain, you know, how you make calls. So um, authorization says that we still need to include our token in the request. Um, we've already set up, you know, authentication in our app, but we have to make sure we include that token when we make this call. And is it uh, some uh, special component or object in Ext React that will help us to make this call and load data? Yes. So what I need to do, <clears throat> go to the API docs. So let me go to the um, Ext React API docs, and I'll search for a thing called a store. Actually, I want the, um, I don't want a guide, I want the actual API documentation. So let me drill down here. <clears throat> I could also have done a search. Here. So here's an example of a store. So I'll just copy this. And then put that into our instructor here in app.js. Now, in our case, this will be new releases. And we need to change the URL, I assume. Right. So in their example, of course, they're just, you know, had some example URL. But we need to use that URL from Spotify. So if we go back over to the API docs, I can copy that. I'll just click here and copy, and then go back to our code. Use this URL. So let's kind of try it one step at a time here. So uh, first, I guess you can uh, you can remove model reference to a model because we don't have a user model, right? Right. I can I'll chat a little bit about what's going on here. This is creating a new instance of you know an ext.data.store, and a store is just a collection of records. Plus, it also has this concept of a proxy, and a proxy says where and how are we getting the data, and then. And with Go ahead, auto Olga. load true. Auto load true means that we will load our data immediately, right? Right. And then okay. um, the config that Olga mentioned a moment ago is called model, and that is a um, that's the name of a record definition. So basically, if we need to describe the data feed more completely, we can use this model property. In our case, we don't we don't need it. So if I hit save here. Hold on here, and let's look at the running app. We should get an error, and we did. So let me make this a little bit bigger. Hold on here, I'm going to make the debugger window a little bit bigger. It looks so like first, we need to send our authentication token, right? Well, we will need to see it, actually. Um, but what I'm seeing here is we're getting a cores error. So you're absolutely right, we do need to send the token. But I'm a little surprised here, actually. We need to also set up for cores. So, you know, cores is a cross-origin request. Uh, we're going from localhost to Spotify. Spotify is set up to allow that. But what they're telling us here is that, hey, there's a certain header that is in the request that shouldn't be there. That's all they're saying. So what I need to do is remove that. So um, if we were to go to the API docs for this proxy class. So let me go back to our code here. Hold on here. Here. If we went to the API docs for this proxy, it would show various properties. One of those is a property that excludes that header. Now I happen to know what it is. It's called, let me just type it in here. Like that. Now we only need to do this because we're making this cross origin request. So theoretically, that should have that one error go away. Let's take a look. Yeah, the error went away, but now we're getting another error. 
And this error has to do with not having the token, like Olga just said. So we need to put that token in our request. So to do that, according to the Spotify documentation, that has to be in the header. So let me go back to our code here. And what we need to do is to say headers. Now again, if we went to the API docs for Ajax proxies, it would explain all these properties. So we need to set this header, and this is documented in Spotify. So Spotify says we have to send a header called authorization, and we have to set it to, and it's called bearer, and then we have to set it to our token. So where is that token? So over here, if you remember this function, it is set up to return the access token. We've already done that logic. And in index HTML, if you recall, we're passing that token in. So basically we're calling authenticate, we're saving that, and that's being passed into our application, right, as okay. an attribute. So in our we app, can use it. yeah, we can go use ahead, it Olga. There. We can use it there, right? Yes. So what's the syntax for that if I pass this in? Uh, it should be available through props, I believe. Right, so I passed it in there. I'm in here. So what Olga is saying is if I then set this up, I can say this dot props dot token, and then that should set it up. So let me kind of proofread this. So again, according to Spotify, we have to send a header called authorization and it's set to the value bearer space and then our token. We're passing the token in as an attribute, therefore it's available as a prop. And that should work, I guess. So let me save and we'll come over here and look at the app. So there's no error here. If we look at network traffic, so let me rearrange my uh, debugger here. We don't need that anymore. There's that call we just made. So let me make this a little bit bigger and we can look at the data we got. So let me make this bigger. There we go. So we did actually get the data. And our data is loaded to our store, right? Is it possible to debug our store somehow? Yeah, so there's kind of a trick um, that I like to do. If you remember, when we set up um, app.js, we did I hold on here? Index.js is what I meant to say. We added this property here just for debugging convenience. There's probably a lot of ways we could do this. You know, we could set breakpoints or whatever. But one kind of convenient way to do it is what I do sometimes is inside of a given class. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say window dot. So that's the name of that property that I established over in index.js. So then I want to say this dot class, or I'm sorry, constructor name is this. So in theory, what that means is I should have a property now, Spotify dot app. And now if I say dot, now I can look at the properties inside of that. In other words, Spotify dot app is set to this instance, and now I can look at its properties. Now the property we wanted, what do we call that? New releases. Yeah, but it's uh, just a constant. You need to assign it to um, to application, to app class. Do something like this. Oh yes, release. I do. Yeah. <laughs> right, you're absolutely right. Good catch. So all right, I need to say this dot new releases. I had said, I put it into a, a local variable. All right, so let's uh, look again. So here, let me refresh. There it is. So that wasn't there a minute ago because as Olga pointed out, it was just a local variable before. Now it's actually an instance field. So now we can run methods on this you know, instance. We go to the store class, we can see what methods it has. And you know, there's a million methods out there, but one of those is get count. And we can also look at records by saying get at. And these are all documented in here. So if I were to say, hold on here, new releases dot get count, uh, we have zero. 
Why do we have zero records? Because here? we have wrong um, uh, root property. We need to right. check what root property is used, and we have like uh, users from uh, our example. Yeah, so this is from the API docs. They set this root property. So let me explain what that is. If we look at the data feed for new releases, the array of values that we're interested in is not at the root. It's at a property, you know, inside of the res um, the result or inside the response. And the property is called albums dot items. That has the array of items. So if we come here and set this to albums dot items and save. There, now let's try that. If I go to the console. Great, we have our data loaded. Now that we have the data, we need to show album art thumbnails in the app.